In this video, we're going to be extending what's called the AR Placement Interactable by adding a component that is going to allow us to block any raycasts that go through the UI. The reason for this is because we don't want to be able to instantiate any objects if we have any UIs on the way. So I'm going to show you what you see playing behind the scenes, which is the results of this video. I'm also going to be sharing the source code in GitHub, so make sure that you check it out. So for now, let's go ahead and jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we need to be doing today, which is to block any raycasts that go through the UI. We're basically not going to allow you to instantiate anything. And this thing, I already created it in a previous project, and I'm going to be putting that in the description. So you're going to be able to download it at the very end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and clone these right here. I'm going to call it with AR object placement with blocking. Blocking meaning that we're going to block the raycast. So we have UI, like I said, we won't instantiate anything. So if I look at the structure here, I have a lie, I have an XR interaction manager because we're using the XR toolkit, AR session. So very standard stuff, AR session origin. And I also have the AR placement interactable, which is the one that we're going to be focusing today because I want this to be able to block UI. So I'm going to be adding an option here to be able to say, OK, whether I want to block it or not. But currently, if we look at the implementation of this, this is basically coming from the packages. So I don't want to touch that because it's going to mess with you know the packages. You want to instead extend that functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something similar to what I did here. I already have an AR placement interactable single. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one. This one is going to be called AR placement. Let's go ahead and capitalize that placement interactable. And then we can just say blocking. We can just go ahead and double click it. And I'm going to start using Visual Studio in my Mac instead of Visual Studio Code. I just want to test it out. So if you see me using it and you're not used to it, that's because I want to see how this works versus how code works. So once it open up, I'm going to show you a couple of things. So if we go ahead and look at the this one right here, and it's really hard to see, but this one is actually inheriting from AR Base Gesture Interactable. And the one that we want to inherit from is this one because the placement interactable is the one that is responsible for placing an object. It also determines whether you know we can start manipulating a gesture when we hit a tap gesture. This means that we don't have a basically we don't have an object yet selected. And this is just a test layer that Unity has. And if the condition here is true, it's going to allow us to tap and basically instantiate an object in our case. We also have what's called on end manipulation. We can do things after we, we end the, the tap gesture. And, and Unity is handling these. They're basically instantiating the object at this point. So what I want to do is I don't want to touch any of these. I think this works as, you know, as it is. What I want to do is I want to intersect the kind of star manipulation because I don't want to start manipulating an object if I have the UI on the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inherit from this object. So let's go ahead and go here. We're going to be inheriting from that object. And it's going to say that it can't find it. And that means that we just need to be bringing in the, the namespace. So if you click here and bring in the using statement, it's going to be bringing in the basically the Unity Engine XR Interaction Toolkit, the AR. And I'm going to go ahead and remove these methods. And if you do public override, and then we're going to be able to see what methods we can overwrite. We can overwrite, you know, quite a bit of methods. And for some reason, it's not showing me the one that I want to override. But if we go here and you look at this method, this method is protected and it has an override, override flag in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy it. We should be able to just re-implement it. And if we go back, I don't want to touch it just yet other than what we did. We go back to Unity. And let's go ahead and swap it. So right now, our AR Placement Interactable is currently using the implementation that Unity has out of the box. And right now, we have the AR Cube assigned. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. And I'm just going to go ahead and search for blocking. And you can see that everything is coming in because we're inheriting from that object. So it's basically inheriting all of its behaviors and fields and properties and anything that it has. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into prefabs, drag and drop my AR cube, and now we should have most of the implementation in there. So what I want to do now is I want to implement a little method that's going to allow us to block any raycasts that are intersecting the UI. And I did that in a previous video, so I have some snippet. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to explain that to you in just a second. 
and we can go ahead and put it on the scripts go into scripts and this one is going to be basically an extension of vector2 and we can just say extensions and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and create a new folder just to keep things organized this one is going to be called extensions this is normally what I do when I place extensions or create extensions in C sharp let's go ahead and double click it and I think everything everything should be okay double click on it and perfect so this is not going to be a mono behavior it's just going to be a static class I'm just going to go ahead and paste it in place and you're going to see that everything is well we have some issues because we have some namespaces that are missing let's go ahead and add some of those namespaces we also need to bring in the namespace for event system and one last one which is going to be a list. I think that's in generic yep that's in generic so basically what this is doing is extending the vector to position we are then checking to see if the you know if, if the pointer is over a game object if it is then that means that we're not intersecting the UI and then the rest of the code is just basically checking to see if we are intersecting with any UI component so that's what the vector2 extension is going to do we could call it UI extension it doesn't really matter what we call it it's just whatever means whatever it means to you whatever is meaningful for you okay so so right now what I want to do is I don't want this if statement to execute otherwise or or basically our method is not going to block the UI so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if gesture because the gesture is going to have the position so we're going to do gesture and we can just say a star position and because we're extending the other basically the vector to meta you can see that we have this meta right here and it's denoted to be an extension because this is something that we are extending so if you weren't extending it you wouldn't see that meta because it's not you know it's not part of the built-in tools and then that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to say okay if the gesture star position is over a, is over a ui object I'm just going to return false, meaning that we don't want to allow this manipulation to start. And, and you can also do this on the, so if you look at the AR placement interactable, let's go ahead and take a look at that. See if we can look at the metadata. And if you look at the metadata, well, in this case, we want to go to this other object, which is the AR based gesture interactable. So these are some of the methods that we're overriding right now, and they're virtual, so that means that you can override them. So you have methods for like if you're dragging let's say that in your drag you want to block the UI you can also override this method and do what I just show you you can also do the same thing on pinch gesture and tap gesture twist twist gesture and then some of these ones as well I found it that for what we need for the placement interactable this is exactly what we need because this is the first thing that it's going to happen before I place an object so in this case this is you know before we start dragging anything this is gonna block the UI of course if you have the UI open and you're dragging and you're already instantiated you may want to block it so in that case you may need to you know extend all the other interactables that you're going to be using you can also look at you know extending the gesture interactable and see if you can get that to work in my case this works so I'm going to show you how this works so let's go ahead and go back into unity make sure that everything you know everything is compiling so the next thing that I want to do is we need to create a UI right because we need to block the the raycast otherwise we, we won't be able to see that this is working so i'm just going to go ahead and go into ui here and we're going to be adding a canvas let's go ahead and go into 2d and we also need to change this to be you know let's go ahead and do a portrait and make sure that our view here has you know resembles the device that i have which is a, an iphone 11 so let's go ahead and add something else here i'm going to also add and just add a panel this is not really what I do when I'm doing, you know, when I'm working on UI. And we can just do something that resembles that we, we have, you know, a UI open. We can call this the background. And then what I'm going to do after this, because we want to toggle this to be able to actually instantiate an object. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a button. Let's go ahead and add a text mesh pro button because that it's going to look way better. And this one is going to be toggle UI and then what I'm gonna do let's make it a little bit bigger because this one is gonna be it's actually really important because this is what the the purpose of this video is going to be and then this one this one can be just you know toggle go ahead and push my cap lock there caps lock and then toggle UI 
and we can make these font a little bit bigger something like that works and perfect and then the way that it's going to work is you know we're going to be either you know showing these or not showing it so we're going to go off and on so we can do we can do something like i think let's go back here let's say show high ui is going to be the first mode high ui and then when we press it it's going to it's going to change the show ui and then it's going to toggle between those two and i don't know if i have a ui manager i normally like to create one of those if i don't we can just create one okay looks like we don't so let's go ahead and create one and this one's going to be called ui manager and let me make sure that this is the case is correct and i'm going to create a new folder here just to keep things organized this one is going to be called managers let's go inside and actually drag and drop this into managers that way we have you know we have all of our code organized drag it and there we go so it should be now under managers and unity should be compiling so let's go ahead and double click it and then what i'm going to do here is i'm going to bind the i'm going to bind the button and we don't need we don't need any of this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say private and we can just say button well in our case it's going to be let me go ahead and go back let me make sure yeah it's just going to be a simple button let's go ahead and button and this is going to be the toggle ui button perfect and we're going to be bringing in the namespace which is going to be the unity engine ui let's go ahead and select it excellent so the next thing that we need is we need to determine okay where this method when this is pressed i want to be able to change it right so we need to do a toggle so i'm just going to say public void toggle let's go ahead and do toggle ui perfect and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go ahead and do something here as easy as you know if this is active let's go ahead and try active oh actually on the game object i think it's called active self there we go i don't know why they call it that way it's really confusing but anyways what i'm going to do is i'm going to say you know what if this is currently active i'm going to be basically deactivating it and then we'll go we'll go back and forth between you know between those that mode so i'm just going to do a not operator at the very beginning and then we can also check just to so that we can change the label appropriately so i'm just going to say you know what if this is currently active then we're basically going to say you know we're going to be deactivating but at that time i want to show that we want to show the ui so if we go back in here remember we we call it high so i'm just going to say in this case let's go ahead and get our component which is going to be fine we can just say get component in children. If we go back here and select the text mesh pro, I can never remember the name of this because it's really confusing. Text mesh pro U GUI. And we can just go ahead and add that in. And what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and bring in the namespace. I'm actually gonna do this right here. That way we can we can just get that component. And this one is gonna be var, and we can just say text mesh pro button UI button text. I think works. Perfect. So that's gonna give us the the label so that we can swap it. So then, if we're active, we wanna hide it. But at that case, like I said, we wanna show the message show UI. We can capitalize this. I like to do that from time to time, and then we can do something like this, and I like to use ternary operators on this. So if we're active, we're going to show, you know, we're going to basically hide it, but we're going to show this label. Otherwise, we're going to be showing high UI. And let me, there we go. And then we can just remove all this code. So the way that it's going to work, we're going to toggle the UI. We're going to say, okay, if this is currently active, I'm going to deactivate it. If this is not active, I'm going to activate it. I'm going to get the text mesh pro component and then we're going to say you know what if the toggle your button is currently active i'm going to in this case it's going to it's going to deactivate at that point but i'm going to show ui and then i'm going to hide we're going to be testing this so let's go back and we also don't need this too perfect let's go back in here into unity and i think that's everything that we need there so then what i'm going to do is on the canvas i'm just going to go ahead and add the manager Perfect. Now we can go into our toggle UI here, and I'm going to bind the onclick event. 
we're going to just go ahead and grab the canvas. And the canvas is going to have the UI manager, so we're going to say toggle UI. We're going to be able to test it here in just a second. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and hit play. And we can just say, and this is complaining, of course. And it's complaining because we haven't associated the button. We need to go ahead and go back. Go into our canvas, and we need to add a serialized field here. That way we can, you know, we can actually expose it through the inspector. And we can do this one more time. And go ahead and hit play. And now we're hiding. And we don't have the button, so we need to we need to be able to show it, right? Otherwise we're not we're not gonna be able to to toggle this back on. So what I'm gonna do is in the toggle UI, let's go ahead and place it outside. So this background here, I'm going to we can just add it right there, and then we can just add it to the top. The bottom, I'm going to keep it on the bottom, and we can just nap it there, and we can do about 150. And let's go ahead and add something else here so that we have more information in the UI. So this one is going to be, uh, we can just say this UI component should be a making the raycast, we can just say it should be blocking the raycast and therefore no object will be instantiated. There you go, something like that so that we know why and the person who is using this knows exactly what we're trying to do. And which hopefully that person is going to be you so that it makes sense and we can make can probably just make this bigger, something like that works. See, this UI component should be blocking the raycast. Let's do the plural. And therefore, no object will be, or we can say, should be instantiated. Let me, should be instantiated. There we go. Okay, so that, that makes more sense now. And let's just resize this. And now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So if you look at these, this is gonna hide. If we go ahead and click on it, it's gonna hide, you know, the, the object itself, and that's not really what we wanna do. We wanna toggle it, and what we wanna toggle is we wanna toggle the basically the background. We don't want to toggle the button because we're not gonna be able to do that. So what we need to do here is let's go ahead and add another property and another field in this case, and we're gonna be so if you look at this component. This is going to be a rec transform, so we can just go ahead and add a rec transform. And this is going to be, or we can just say toggle. We can just say this is going to be our background, which is that, that is what it's called, so we should call it that. And in this case, I, I do want to do what we're doing right now, but I don't want to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste this here. Copy and paste this here. So we're going to be basically toggling toggling the background. Then we're gonna get, be getting the text. And then we're gonna be changing the state of the UI. And let me go ahead and undo that, expand this, and I don't know what I did, there we go. Okay, so that should work, background. But okay, so let's go ahead and go back and we need to associate our new property to the UI manager. And now we should be okay. Let's go ahead and hit play. I wasn't really thinking about this when I was writing it, so there we go. So now we can toggle it, show it, hide it, and show it. All right, guys, so I got this build and I want to show you the results. I'm going to start doing the plane detection. I have my background showing in here, also the UI. So as soon as I hide it, I'm able to instantiate objects. I can also press the button and you can see that with the objects are not getting instantiated beneath the button because it is blocking so the other thing that I can also do is I can also select just like I used to be able to do. And I can also select objects even when the UI is on the way and that's because I didn't extend the basically the drag or the selectable interactable. So we could do that as well if, we, if you needed to do that. It will be exactly what I did. All right guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check me out in patreon.com where I'm basically posting early access source code and also what I'm doing behind the scenes. Thank you very much, guys.